Technology keeps evolving, and as each year passes, we see a new range of products with faster speeds and greater efficiency. However, keeping up with the different types of technologies around us can be kind of difficult. This is why we do the hardware for you. In today's video, we'll be discussing a crucial element of SSDs, and that is flash memory. Hi there, this is Mike from Sabrin, and if you enjoy tech videos, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you stay updated. In today's video, we'll be discussing what is NAND memory, how does it play into SSDs, what are the types, and which types should you choose for your PC. So stick around until the end of the video. Before we start with the complex stuff, let's quickly go over the basics. What are the three main parts of an SSD? An SSD is made up of three parts, the controller, DDR memory, and flash memory. DDR memory isn't always present, but when it is, it is used as a cache, which speeds up frequently accessed data. The controller is just the main controller between the chips inside and the device where you're adding your storage device. Last but not least is the NAND flash memory. This is probably the most essential part of the SSD. This is why in today's video, we'll be discussing this in detail. NAND flash memory is a type of non-volatile storage. This means that unlike volatile storage devices, it doesn't depend on any power to retain data. The entire purpose behind NAND flash devices is to not only reduce the cost per bit, but also increase the maximum chip capacity. This will allow the flash memory to come closer to other storage devices like hard disk drives. While this all seems pretty simple, the real question is, how does this actually work? Well, the thing is, NAND uses electrical circuits to store the data as blocks. Once the electric circuit is broken and the power is detached, NAND storage continues to retain the data using a semiconductor. Each NAND memory cell essentially has two gates, the control and floating gates. These gates ensure that data flows perfectly, and if you want to program one cell, a voltage charge is sent to the control gate, and the electrical charge is stored in the floating gate. Just to let you know, this is a very basic explanation, just to keep things simple for this video. Moving on, let's actually look at the several types of NAND memory types. There are four main types, and they are SLC, MLC, TLC, and QLC. The main thing that distinguishes them is how many bits that each cell can store inside. As the name suggests, SLC or single level cells store one bit of data per cell and MLC or multi-level cells store two bits of data per cell. The number keeps climbing and in the case of TLC or triple le uh, level cells, we get three bits of data per cell and then in QLC or quadruple level cells, we can store four bits per cell. The greater number of bits, the more capacity each cell can hold. This means that QLC can hold the maximum level of storage and SLC can hold the least. Unfortunately, the maximum amount of storage comes at a cost, and that is speed and endurance. This means that even though SLC cache can hold the least capacity, it is also the fastest and more precise, and of course, the most expensive. Due to its cost, these chips are mainly used in industrial use, not in the consumer space. On the other hand, MLC is much cheaper than SLC, and it has far greater capacity as well. However, its durability and speeds aren't up to SLC's level. As we keep going up to TLC and then QLC, the price does get lower, but so does the durability and speeds comparatively. This is why TLC and QLC are mainly reserved for consumer level usage, while the former two, the MLC and SLC, are normally used by enterprise. However, TLC SSDs are now being introduced in enterprise. Up until now, we have been talking about how much capacity each cell has, but with this, we will be talking about how the cells are arranged. Originally, memory cells were arranged side by side, which was called 2D NAND. However, nowadays, we have 3D NAND technology. The memory chips are stacked on top of each other this time. The whole point of this is to make the device run much faster and more efficient while simultaneously holding more information. Here at Sabrin, our drives use 3D NAND for this reason. 3D NAND has many advantages over the traditional 2D NAND as it has a higher density and can be written and erased more times than 2D NAND. This is all thanks to the fact that it has larger memory cells. While 3D NAND has existed for more than a decade now, it has only recently entered the market with some incredible developments as it's been able to provide lower power consumption 
better performance and lower cost per bit of storage. As TLC and QLC memory with 3D NAND grows increasingly popular, one can't help but wonder which is better and what are the pros and cons of each. In some cases, bigger might be better, but when comparing QLC and TLC, TLC is able to tolerate a much higher number of write and arrays operations due to its fewer bits written per cell. Also, TLC is much faster than QLC drives in many ways, and it is more efficient at correcting errors. Now, let's compare the different features of QLC and TLC NAND. Let's start with the performance of both. If we take a look at the read speeds, then both QLC and TLC NAND have very similar speeds. Over here, QLC is able to keep up with TLC, which means that it's perfect for read-heavy workloads. However, when it comes to the write performance, then like we've already discussed, TLC is much faster and more efficient at it. Moving on to endurance. Because TLC has a greater number of program and array cycles, this also means it has greater endurance. This means that if you have very write-heavy workloads, then it's better to go for a TLC. TLC drive. Our Sabran Rocket TLC SSDs, as well as our TLC PCI Gen 4 drives, provide high endurance numbers, making this great for write heavy tasks. Just to let you know, endurance numbers are normally represented with total bytes written or TBW. While TLC has been winning when it comes to endurance and performance, it is a little bit behind when it comes to storage size. QLC technology has the capacity to provide 768 gigabits per flash particle, which can increase depending on the number of pieces. For example, our Sabran Rocket Q is available in up to eight terabytes of storage. However, our TLC variants are only available up to four terabytes. Last but not least, let's compare the prices of both or types of SSDs because of course, price matters. The simple answer is, QLC drives are much cheaper than TLC drives. In fact, it is the cheapest out of all the four types of cells that we have discussed here today. Just to let you know, many of our Sabran M.2 drives use DDR4 technology as a cache to increase performance alongside our TLC and QLC SSDs. This means you get fast speeds for transferring relatively large files without slowdown, but also means that if you are using it as your OS drive, you'll find that your system is very snappy and programs just open up really quick. And just to let you know as well, you can actually combine some of these technologies, QLC and TLC together. So for example, our Sabran Rocket Q drives, like our eight terabyte model, can flip up to a quarter of its QLC memory into TLC, meaning that you get up to two terabytes of TLC write speeds. So when you are transferring large files, you'll be very hard pressed to slow it down. In conclusion, it is safe to say that if your budget is limited or you need the maximum amount of storage, then definitely go for QLC, just like our Sabran Rocket Q, which is available up to eight terabytes, or the Sabran Rocket 4 QLC SSD. While this may come at a small cost of endurance and performance, QLC with 3D NAND technology is much faster than your old hard disk drive, as well as your old two and a half inch SSD. However, if your priority is endurance and performance and price is not so much of an issue, then you should definitely go and get yourself a TLC SSD, just like our Sabran Rocket 4 or Sabran Rocket 4 Plus. But before you go on and make your final decision, let's quickly take a look at which workloads are best for both QLC and TLC technology. QLC NAND technology is best for read dominant workloads and for someone who doesn't need the fastest write speeds, whereas with TLC, this is best for write dominant workloads as well as needing incredible read performance. This is why QLC is not considered a replacement for TLC. Instead, it is seen as an upgrade for those who have hard disk drives or two and a half inch SSDs, or even a slower NVMe SSD. With that said, that's all we have for you guys today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this overview of TLC and QLC memory, and hope that you've understand a little bit more about these technologies, as well as helping you choose which SSD you should go for. Here at Sabrin, we have a plethora of NVMe SSDs to choose from, so make sure to check them out if you wanna upgrade your rig. Also, leave some suggestions to what you'd like to see next in our next video. But that's it for today. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit that like button and make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you're new to our channel. Anyway, look after yourselves and we'll see you next video.
Bye. Coast to coast, I rock at most times.